Have you ever played a game before where it was so slow in terms of FPS that it felt like a still motion film where you're flicking one page at a time? Well, over 10 years ago, there was a game called Command and Conquer 3. And I remember playing this with some of my mates and we had some really good hardware at the time. But there was always this one scenario that you would come into and that was when you were versing a heap of other people and everyone had these massive battles going on at the same time, you would just see all the units approaching each other and you'd be like, uh-oh, here we go. And then all of a sudden, bam, it hit. Your screen locked up. And I remember the first time this happened, you were wondering, is my computer frozen? But then all of a sudden you just see a slow bit of movement and then almost it was like all the units disappeared. This was Command and Conquer 3 on Massive Battles. And you'd be talking to your friend and usually you didn't use any voice chat software on the PC because there was no Discord at the time and there was only Skype. And if you use Skype, then your PC probably would crash and probably would blue screen. So you're on the phone and you're like, dude, are you seeing this? And their response would be, uh, I think the question you should be asking is, what am I not seeing? Training. But this got me wondering, now fast forwarding over a decade later, we have the new Zen 3 processors and we're going to be using the 5950X and we've also got the RTX 3090. And when we combine the two, what kind of FPS can we expect in Command and Conquer 3? Let's get straight into it and give you guys the answer. If you want to get a Windows 10 Pro Key license for cheap, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $14.50, using the coupon code TYC on checkout, you can save yourself 18% and get that key instantly delivered. Links in description below. What I thought would start out as a straightforward journey ended up turning into a world of complications. And what I mean by this is that the game itself, Command & Conquer 3, was actually limited to 30 FPS. And since then they have this on Origin and also released it on Steam, which costs a lot more money than it does on Origin for some odd reason, but since they've done this, they have made it so that you can't even mod the game to go up to 60 FPS, where back in the day, a few modders were able to make this game run at 60 FPS. However, one big complication that did come from this was that the game's speed was tied to the FPS. It was actually a flaw, and as the game developers quote, they made a mistake when they were coding the game and they didn't care so much. So when you did make this game 60 FPS, it essentially increased the speed of the game twofold. However, since Skirmish did have a way of slowing down the gameplay itself, you could then set the gameplay to 50% and you had a real time 60 FPS in Skirmish. However, this mode didn't exist in either the campaign single player or the multiplayer online. Though Skirmish was one of my favorite options and moving into the first test, I managed to uh, have seven brutal opponents versus me so they would make a heap of different units and then hopefully spam the map full of units. However, initially the Ryzen 9 5950X was easily handling this and the RTX 3090 was actually downclocking itself to one of its lowest states. So and even at 4K max settings, just really was giving this system nothing to sweat about. However, I wanted to give this system something to sweat about. I wanted to give this all it had. If this game was gonna make some FPS choke, it was gonna happen today. So I then set about on a mission to download the world map builder for Command & Conquer 3, and I set about making myself a custom map, which in itself, opened up even more problems where getting the maps to work, I had to download a custom reg edit hack on a forum, which was only a problem that came from EA releasing this game on Origin. And I mean, don't get me started on EA and problems with games. The list goes on forever. But somehow we managed to get the world builder working eventually where we had to save it in user maps. And so if you have a problem saving Command & Conquer games, it's probably because you're trying to save it in the system map section and not the user map section. But after we saved this game in user maps, called it our custom name, made it big enough, and got through all the problems actually editing the map itself where the world builder just crashed continuously, we eventually got a usable map that I could have a bottleneck on, where it was me 
versus seven brutal opponents with pretty much unlimited resources and they would just keep sending the units. And it was here that I was finally satisfied where I could zoom the camera out even to the point where it was kind of a bug in the game, but I was satisfied. I had the map filled with units, filled with glorious units that would make this 5950X feel the wrath of the old school single threaded bottleneck. However, this wasn't the case at all. The 5950X was just handling it with ease. I was actually kind of surprised that it came down to this. I was hoping for more, but then it hit. We got there. We got the 0.1% low to three. This was the best I could do. We dropped it. And at one stage, we actually managed to get the FPS below 30, consistently in the mid 20s. So I had accomplished something but what does this accomplishment mean? Well, I guess in hindsight, that games have come very far since 2007 in terms of optimization. But another thing that really surprised me was back in the day, no one really cared about 30 FPS too much, myself included. When I was playing this game, I actually never really bothered to notice that RTS wasn't so bad at 30 FPS. But I think with the massive transition to FPS Twitch shooters, the demand for higher frame rate gaming became very apparent. Though ultimately these tests have left me unsatisfied, I'm going to go to one of the most popular CPUs in history, and that is the Sandy Bridge architecture with our little i5-2500. I need to know if we can bottleneck a 2012 CPU with this game. I can't. It's, I got it this time. Okay, good. Sleep. You'll be able to leave a recording. Yeah. No, but it happens when it's getting whoa, overloaded. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's happening there? Huh? Zero. So. No, 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 behind it. Like some assets would disappear. Really? No, they're fine. Yeah, just it should just disappear. Is it on the camera? Like, are you getting... Yeah, yeah. Getting no, it's going to get plenty. Yes! Yes! Woo! Yeah! Woo! I got it. I got it to bottleneck out, I got it to choke out. And our next test subject right behind me is the i5-2500, 8 gigabytes of RAM and an HD7750. Something that would be considered a bit of an upgrade from that PC that was made back in 2005. And the good thing about this is we managed to do it. We managed to get it to completely skip out while we were testing this same scenario. Now, as we said before with the Ryzen CPU, it is much more this time than I ever did in the past, but at least we got the Ryzen to drop down to a 3.1% low. And in this case with the i5-2500, we got it to go to 0, 1% and 0.1% low. So my job here is done. Though besides my excitement for getting a single threaded game to, I guess, uh, plonk out on one setup and then get really low 0.1% and 1% lows on another setup, I do look at this game and I do see one thing. And this was really a shock to me personally. And that was just how good the graphics can look from a game from 2007. But on the RTX 3090, we saw that this was just not using any GPU utilization at hardly at all. The card wasn't even going above a thousand megahertz. But what we were seeing is that at 4K, this was a gorgeous looking game. Like for a game that was made in 2007, I was really surprised. And in fact, I was just having a lot of fun. Besides all the map editing mistakes and all the errors that we had throughout getting this process to work the way I wanted it to work, it was still a very exciting game, even in 2020. And so that really goes to show that I guess games coming out in 2020, for some reason, they're just so graphically intensive, but I'm not really seeing the graphical improvements in a lot of the cases. But doing a test like this, although it shows that the latest and greatest hardware has come a long way, and it's an immense improvement over what I was playing with Command & Conquer back in the day on, it does, sort of leave one thing open to me, and that is the game mechanics. Games like Command & Conquer 3 will forever be legendary titles. And the reason being is because it's the mechanics, the way the game plays out, the strategy involved, and the actual gameplay itself. 
And I just can't help but feel like when I was playing this game, besides the terrible optimization on the game being capped at 30 FPS and the single core thread dependency, it still played really well. I could still enjoy myself, especially at 4K. And although I went through a lot of hoops and hurdles, I just found myself getting attached to this game again and realizing how much fun PC gaming was over 10 years ago. And when I look at games nowadays coming out, sure, there's a lot of games coming out that are a lot of fun, but they miss this real balance of unit composition, upgrades, technology trees, and all that stuff exists in this game and you jump into it and you just really appreciate what the old stuff has to offer, even though the newest hardware can do it like no other. Anyhow guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also let us know in the comments section below if there's any games you want me to test out and then make custom maps for and test beyond the realm of normal. Because after all those bumps and hurdles and all the map editing bugs that we came into, I must say it was a lot of fun, this whole process. And we've got the question of the day here which comes from normal person and they ask, is it worth delitting an X5675? My temperatures have a variance of 10 degrees from the worst to the best core. And to answer this question directly, I don't think the uh, X5675s had paste on them. I think they were actually soldered. I believe the LGA 1156 mainstream first gen processors, like the i7-870 for example, and X5450, um, they were uh, using paste, so you could delid them as opposed to the six cores on the X58, they were actually soldered. So if you try to delid that without specialized gear and knowledge, you will damage your CPU, unfortunately. So I wouldn't risk it. I'd just be happy with what you got and try and overclock that 5675 to around 4.5 gigahertz. Hope that answers that question. I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.